Next up on the agenda is item 5.0, and that is our superintendent report. I will turn that right over to you, right. Superintendent Kingsley. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. A little out of breath, but yeah. I'm ready. Um, <laughs> you can stall if you need. Yeah, no. That was a lot of fun. Uh, community partnerships is a lot of hard work, and to be surrounded by the collective group of the willing, I'm a very proud superintendent tonight. So, as you all know, uh, we're a week removed just about from an election process and embarking upon a transition for our board. And I thought to start our remarks, my remarks tonight, is I just want to first and foremost thank President Feb for his leadership. Uh, as I've had an opportunity, uh, not just over the last 120 days, but the opportunity to study this community, to study the health and the governance of this board and its collective leadership, your leadership. Uh, this is not about party and politics. This is about how you show up, your steady hand, and your ability to navigate really complex challenges. And I'm going to miss sitting next to you. And I just want to say thank you for all of your leadership. That was well-deserved recognition for you. I am looking forward to working with our new director uh, and the collective board moving forward. Uh, tonight we'll be speaking about some adaptive complex things. We're going to talk about our budget and going through our budget development process. So tonight is the beginning, uh, but we'll continue to have ongoing dialogue to make sure we create an on-ramp for our new director and make sure that we can continue to ask challenging questions of each other around our drivers and priorities moving forward, knowing that we have big, de big decisions on behalf of our children, our staff, and this community on the horizon. I do have a couple technical updates that I think is important for the community to hear from me. Uh, as we know, collectively, uh, the vaccine from Pfizer for COVID-19 has been approved for all of our students and children ages 5 through 11. Uh, I think it's important to note that PSD has not changed its stance on vaccination. Uh, we're not requiring a vaccination for staff and or our students. Uh, but I do want to, in my leadership position, encourage you to strongly consider it. We do believe that it makes a difference. It is a family choice. If it's right for you and your particular family, we want to encourage that. There will be present at many of our school sites mobile vaccine clinics over the next month. They are completely voluntary, and parent consent is required for students under the age of 18. If any family in our community wants to have more information available to them, that is available on our district website. Uh, we are really proud. You've heard uh, me articulate that as a result of our approach to navigating the complexities of this pandemic, we've been able to successfully identify a way for approximately over 99.6% of our staff and students to be eligible to be in school, in person, uh, and at work every single day. We're proud of that fact. Uh, but we're still experiencing quarantines. And as we continue to listen to families in our community who are experiencing quarantine, uh, we've recently been reflective around how we can improve access to instruction, not just the provision of assignments to ensure that any children or staff members that may have to be home as a result of quarantine status or as a result of not feeling well, we want to continue to ensure that we're providing robust educational experiences regardless of that scenario. That's a complex challenge for all of our teachers. I want to give them all the credit in the world. We're not asking our families to, or our teachers to broadcast their instruction every day. We're not looking to pivot and move back collectively to remote learning. But we want to make sure that learning never stops. Uh, regardless of the scenario that you are in, we're all dealing with the complexities of this pandemic in different ways, and quarantines right now are an unfortunate reality. And I'm just really proud uh, of the effort that collectively we're making as a community. But we've also heard from parents that we can do better in this space to make sure that we're not just providing assignments on a website, that we're identifying ways to continue to provide access to the instruction that was available during the school day, and we're doing that. There will be more robust information being shared with our families this Friday regarding what that means, and so I want to just make sure that people are looking out for that, and I just want to thank all of our teachers and school leaders uh, for doubling down on that effort, knowing you know we only get one shot of helping our students be successful in school, and we got to do everything we can, whether they're in person or not. I have a few celebrations that I'd love to build off of. As you know, in our last superintendent's remarks, my superintendent's remarks, I talked about kindness and the focus on kindness. I'm excited to share that many other schools across PSD have been doing very simpler examples of that great work uh, beyond in learning from some of the things that we heard from Lincoln Middle School. 
uh, just a couple of weeks ago. For example, at Bader Elementary School, our students are logging acts of kindness as a part of an acts of kindness campaign. At Linton Elementary School, acts of kindness are a part of their daily pledge. It's a part of their norm and their culture and their building. And at Bolts Middle School, students use kindness, uh, kindness board to share stories with each other about acts of kindness they're having at school that they can talk about, collaborate, and celebrate widely. I'm so proud to be a part of such a supportive and caring community. Uh, and kindness matters. I also want to thank the mountain lion that was visible by O'Day Elementary School this week for being so kind to not hurt any of our children and teachers. That was an interesting experience for me being a superintendent uh, over the course of this week. And I'll close by saying this, in the spirit of kindness and support and care, and we actually honored one of these uh, incredible professionals today, is this is National School Psychology Week. When we talk about the needs of our community, our psychologists are on the front line supporting the needs of families of children to try to create better stability for them to be able to thrive in our classroom environments. National School Psychology Week is a week set aside to celebrate the important work of our school psychologists. They are uniquely qualified members of our school teams who support students' abilities to learn and our teachers' ability to teach. Our school psychologists partner with families, teachers, administrators, and other professionals to create healthy and supportive learning environments that strengthen connections between home, school and community. We need a whole army of those people and I just want to take a special moment to recognize all of our school psychologists that support this district as well as many others. Uh, we simply couldn't do this work without them. That, that concludes my remarks for this evening.